Hello, what I will show today is uh, how to um, style some uh, data and do some simple queries uh, in ArcGIS. Uh, what I will use uh, is uh, uh, a data set that is present in uh, uh, the distribution of ArcGIS, uh, which is basically global data, including cities, rivers, lakes, etc. So I'm downloaded them into this ArcGlobe data folder, and I'm going to add rivers, uh, lakes, continents, and cities to my project. Good. So uh, the continents are below. Of course, if I put the continents all above, I won't see anything because uh, the layer order basically follow the order they are visualized in uh, the main map. And here I have uh, uh, the different cities, rivers, lakes, and continents that are in this data set. So the first thing I want to do is explore a little bit the attributes of this um, uh, data set. Uh, so I just go on one layer, I right click, and I open the attribute table. So I can have a, an idea from the attribute table what kind of data I have. For example, the cities, I have the city name, population, if it's a capital or not, the country name and uh, the continent where the city is located. For the rivers, again, right click, open attribute table. I only have the name of the river and the river system it belongs to. Uh, lakes, uh, I have another bunch of attributes, the name, the area, the surface elevation and the depth of um, and the depth, uh, the maximum depth, I guess this is of, of the lake. Here you can see that probably minus 999 is, uh, is, a, is a no, no value, is a, is a none value. Which concerns the continent, again, right click, open attribute table. It's actually very simple. So we have Asia, North America, et cetera, et cetera. So just the continent names in here. So this is our data set is. So first thing we can do is to uh, give a, a bit of a better uh, look at this to this map. So we can have the continents, for example, we can make them in a, in a light gray. So it will be, it will be nicely, um, nicely visible. And also maybe I make light gray, the outline color, so I can set the outline color. So you see that here, uh, if I click uh, on these, uh, on this uh, um, this icon here, it's a very quick way to to color to color my um, to color my uh, my layers. But I can also do the same thing by double clicking on the name of the layer, and the symbology appears. So you have the layer properties with all the properties here. Uh, the symbology appears, and I can actually choose uh, to access the very same. Um, the very same uh, um, uh, layer color and layer style and symbols here. So this is how I would color the lakes. And you would see that basically we have the lakes colored uh, as I told them. Rivers, again, I can do like this. So double click on the rivers uh, and uh, I click here and I give it a, a bluish which color that's great so i can see the rivers for the cities uh, i might want to do something uh, slightly different for example i can double click in here uh, and i get again to this uh, um, uh, to this layer but i maybe want to for example um, divide the cities by category so i just go here and i just want to highlight somehow the capital cities or not so i choose capital this goes into the, into the attribute table that we saw before and lists uh, what is available from the attribute table. And I can do here, uh, add all values. So uh, the cities that are capitals, I could uh, do something like this. I could just, I'm just making it a little bit smaller. Maybe eight is fine. Okay, and the cities that are not capital, I just want a black symbol. So I just wanna differentiate them. And I apply them, and you see that the capital cities are basically popping out in my map. Uh, I can also divide these things by uh, different uh, by by different properties. For example, I could choose to uh, uh, to give it different 
to give it different colors according, for example, to the population. Uh, and add all values, this is gonna take a little bit. And these are all the population values. Uh, this is really not, um, uh, not useful, I would say. It's a bit more useful, for example, if I would decide to grade them by um, colors. So for example, I can go to quantities and make population. And you'll see that here, um, uh, the, the, the data inside the population table in the cities is categorized. For example, very small cities uh, and according, accordingly uh, bigger cities. I can go red to green, for example. If I click here, I can choose properties for all symbols and then I go back. Uh, and then I go back to, to this table, I can select the size of the symbol, for example, and it will not change the color coding. So in this po at this point, I've colored the cities by, uh, by the population. I can also make the symbols bigger with the same, uh, uh, with the same um, sort of, um, with the same uh, uh, um, rationale, I can make uh, the population bigger, the, the uh, city's symbol bigger or smaller according to population. I can give it a different symbol here. For example, I can give it something like that and you'll see that. Uh, okay. Okay. And they get categorized by, by, uh, radius in this case. So you see that the bigger, that the cities with major uh, population are actually uh, highlighted by a bigger, by a bigger dot. I'm gonna keep this one because I think it's, ve it's a very nice to visualize population. Uh, another, uh, another thing you can do is to classify uh, in different ways. So you saw that the classification that happened there was almost automatic. So you don't have any choice over that, but if you click right here on the classify here, you actually have the possibility to uh, make um, to make a choice. For example, I can have less classes and I can define them into quantiles, so the different quantiles. And you will see that I, as I okay that, uh, the symbols here will change. Of course, uh, it's probably better to, uh, to go by natural breaks, which is the automatic sort of the standard classification that is proposed by ArcGIS. And I think this is this is quite efficient. So you will see that here, basically the population now has been updated by, by this, uh, by these values basically. So this is a quick way to style, uh, to style your layer. And uh, it's actually, uh, it's actually very nice if you want to, uh, to have a visual uh, image of, of your data. As we are here, and as we gave uh, a sort of a nice, um, sort of a nice uh, look to our map, uh, maybe we can go a little bit over uh, what is the difference between the layout view and uh, the data view. So this is the data view where I can actually uh, look at my data, zoom in, zoom out, uh, and do many different things with, um, with the map. Uh, but if I click down here, I can go to the layout view, or I can also click in view here and go to the layout view. So these two buttons are, are basically the same. So if I go to layout view, what I will see is uh, how the map will appear when it's printed. So you will see that now, basically, instead of, uh, of a page of a, a non-bounded page here, uh, in the layout view, I have a, a very well bounded page. Now imagine this as, a, for example, your your A4 sheet, and you want to have your map. Uh, you want to have your map into that. So you can still use the zoom in, for example. So if you want a map of Europe, you can go in and and make, let's say, a map of Europe. You can make it a bit nicer, you can move uh, move things around, etc. So what will appear in your printed map, so if you decided to print this, is basically what you see here. Now the nice part of, of the layout view is that you can uh, put things that are usually, uh, that can be usually seen in uh, um, in printed maps. For example, uh, you might wanna put, you might wanna go to insert here and put a legend. So 
uh, a wizard will appear that will ask you what do you want what do you want to put for example we think that put i think that putting continents is not really relevant so i'm just gonna just gonna delete it uh, set the number of columns is one it's okay we don't have too many values so we go to next takes a second you can choose a nice border for your legend background maybe not really we can we can put it in a yellow whatever and then make some some nice adjusting to it next and then this is basically asking you how you want the legend displayed here uh, i'm gonna keep everything i'm gonna keep everything uh, standard and you see that something appeared here that is basically the legend of your map so what you have in here and what you selected uh, out the continent is not shown but uh, uh, let me zoom in and if you want to zoom into the page you have to go to these other zoom controls so these are to zoom into the data these ones with the little page underneath are to zoom into the map you go here and what you will see is that you have uh, the city populations rivers and lakes now you might wanna uh, for example i see that city has a capital c the rivers doesn't have a capital r so you might want to do this and it's gonna update here you might want to do this double click here and the lakes is gonna appear here so for example for example another thing you can do you can measure cities Okay, so you just you just made made a nice map. Of course, uh, a map is not complete, uh, especially a printed map is not complete if it doesn't have um, a scale bar. Well, first of all, a north arrow. We can choose a number of different north arrows. I'm going to select a very simple one, put it in. So telling you where the north is, nice. And of course, a map is not complete uh, unless you have a scale bar. So you can select again uh, lots of different scale bars. I'm gonna gonna go for a very simple one here, uh, and I'm gonna put it here, for example. Now I'm gonna go into the page, and uh, you see that here it's not very nice this subdivision. So we can fix it. As any object in, inside the, the legend, you can actually sorry inside the data view, you can actually double click on it, and uh, a legend, um, sorry, a scale line properties will appear. So for example, we might want to adjust the width uh, and we can tell the, the, the legend is in kilometers. So I want to adjust the width, not to 510 because it's not so nice, but to 500 and then I apply it. So you see that now I have this legend very, very well, nicely, nicely put. I can diminish the number of subdivisions. So I just have um, only one 500 kilometers, I can put four, so we get the 2000 kilometers mark. Okay, and I decrease the number of subdivisions, so I have a tick mark every 250 kilometers. So this is how, uh, there are, actually there are, let me show you, there are a number of other, um, of other, um, uh, of other, um, options that you can choose uh, in terms of what kind of numbers uh, you want, uh, what kind of format you want for the numbers, uh, the frame of the legend, the size and position, etc., etc. So this is basically all styling uh, this, uh, this uh, scale bar that you just put here. But this would be a map that now you would feel more comfortable printing because uh, you have a legend, you have all the information you actually need for a reader to understand how to read this map, uh, actually. So uh, this is a very uh, short, quick and, sh quick and uh, short view of uh, the, the layout view. There is one more thing that you can actually do. If you select your layout view and you right click on it, you will see that you can open a properties uh, tab in here. Uh, and here you have uh, sort of a data frame properties tab. I think it's very important sometimes to put on the map a grid to basically show the coordinates. So we can go into grids, make a new grid. Uh, usually you can make a graticle, so something like this. 
uh, a measured grid uh, in, in grid unit, in map units, or something uh, like that in uh, like uh, um, road atlases in, uh, in sectors. But usually when we're dealing with geographic maps and geologic maps, this is what, this is what we want. So I can go next uh, and I can select if I want only the labels, uh, tick marks and labels, or if I wanted the full grid to be, uh, to be there. Uh, I want to see the full grid. For the moment, let's put it 10 degrees. Let's see what happens with 10 degrees. Uh, major division takes uh, here. You can adjust uh, whatever you like, whatever you want. And uh, we move on and we finish. Then we apply. And you see that here, I have a nice grid. Uh, and if you zoom in the map, you will see that you have coordinates in this, in this grid. So this is basically um, how somebody would uh, navigate uh, your printed map as well. If they had a GPS, for example, and if they wanted to know uh, coordinates and, and so on and so forth. So this is a very quick view of the, of the data view. Possibilities are endless. I should say that, that I really like how ArcMap um, treats the data view. It's actually very intuitive and very simple. Uh, but let's go back for a second to, um, to our data. Uh, to our data view. So we skipped from the, the layout view, which was here to the data view, which is here. And you see that now that I, that I did this, uh, now that I zoomed in, my uh, map view, my data view, sorry, my layout view changed. So this is something really to keep in mind. The, the, the uh, data view and the layout view are actually connected. So if you, if you zoom or if you shift your focus somewhere else, for example, I'm going from Europe to the United States, this will change as well in your layout view, uh, in your layout view. And uh, uh, the map, the, the, the map elements, so the scale will update accordingly. So if you zoom in, the scale will keep updating. And sometimes this is a problem because if I keep zooming in and I zoom in too much, for example, I make a big zoom here in Texas, then you will see that your scale bar goes, goes away from, from the data view. So you would have to readjust a little bit your, your elements here. So this is to keep in mind. Uh, what I wanna show uh, now just very briefly and very quickly is uh, how do we um, select subsets of the data that we have here. So there are a few ways uh, and uh, uh, selecting subsets really depends on uh, uh, what you want to do with, uh, with the data. So first uh, way to do it, uh, for example, let me take the continents. You have the attribute table and you have the continent name here. So you can uh, double click on the continents. You go to definition query you go to Query Builder down here, and this um, a window opens. So you can double click the continent and you see that it's basically, um, it's basically uh, put down here. And you can say equal, and then you go to get unique values. And this is basically asking your table, tell me what unique values there are for continents. And you see that here you have all your, your unique values for continents. So for example, I want Asia. Double click on Asia and okay. Now I apply my query and you see that for the continents, I only have Asia here. So everything else disappeared and I only have Asia here. Uh, let's see for the lakes. What kind of let's let's imagine that I just want the data for for Asia, uh, the lakes I think, oh the lakes do not have the Asian continent, the rivers do not have the continents. Let's see if the cities have that. Yes, the cities have a continent, so I can actually do exactly the same thing. Uh, let me show you how to do this. Okay, the same thing. Query builder, cont equal, get unique values, double click on Asia and okay. And that's it. So just a very quick, uh, quick note in the query builder, 
you have many different operators. So you can also select uh, continents, for example. Uh, continent that is not Asia. And so you will see that only there must be some problems in the data set here because there are still some cities in Asia that are that are popping out. Query builder. Let me clear that continent, not Asia. Oh, now all of them because this is a okay. So this is a, probably a problem with the with the data set. Let me do this equal Asia. Okay, now it works. So this is basically only the cities that are that are in Asia. So uh, what do I do for the rivers and lakes? I would like to have a map only of Asia. So I don't want all these rivers and lakes that are here, but I cannot filter them out because there is no Asia. Uh, there is no Asia uh, table in there. So what I can do is go here and make a select uh, by location, for example. So select by location here. Uh, select features from rivers. So I want the rivers, for example, that are within the continents. But this will select the rivers that are within all the continents. So what I have to do first is to select which continent I want. I go up here, select features, and I select Asia. So I just click on one point that is in Asia. So now Asia is selected in my, um, in my layers. So selection, select by location, rivers, source layer is the continent, but I only use the selected features. And I can say intersect the source layer feature. Now here you have lots of, um, uh, lots of uh, uh, different options. Let's see the, the intersect select features should work. Uh, no, so contain the source layer feature. Oops. Yes, it worked. Uh, it worked already in the first time. So I want to select the rivers that are uh, that intersect with the feature. So you'll notice now that if I turn off some rivers have been selected here. If I go on the attribute table, I see that these rivers are those that are in Asia. So what I wanna do or what I can do is go to go here, right click, go data, export data, and I can I can actually select my folder downloads um, I can select this folder or uh, too many folders okay I select this folder and I name the shape the new shape file beavers Asia and I press OK. And it asks me if I want to export the data to a layer. And yes, I want. So you see that now I only have the reverse in Asia. So now I only have um, reverse cities and continents that are in Asia. Of course, the reverse is a new file, but the cities and the continents will uh, contain all the values, they are just filtered out uh, from, from, uh, for display. So if you reload them, if you 
uh, delete now this one. We can do that, delete now this one and add the cities again, you will actually lose everything that we did. So this is just a very quick way to um, uh, start up with uh, some very simple data set and make some simple, some, some simple selections um, and actually um, try to, to play with the data. So this is it. Thank you.